Crisp, crisp audio check. Like iceberg lettuce. Iceberg <laughs> lettuce. <laughs> you a uh, you a Caesar? You a Cobb? What kind of? Uh, More of a Caesar lady. More myself. of a Caesar lady. Yeah, I dabble with Cobb. Do you do cru- croutons? croutons? You do croutons? croutons? <laughs> I can't do bread. I can't. I can't eat bread or cheese anymore. My stomach's all fucked up. Really? Yeah, but I used to love croutons. I fuck with croutons hard back in the day. Wow. Um. It's weird, uh, just getting slightly older, certain things that, uh, I don't know, we were just talking about, like, getting, like, repairs done on, on yeah. your place. It's just, like, this that part of adulthood sucks, where you, yeah. where you have, to have to, like, wait around and, like, make sure you call to get stuff taken off of bills and stuff like oh that. Oh, my God. The adulting. It's really, it's so hard. And I feel like I'm a responsible person. But if there are too many adulting things piling up, like I have to call, you know, like the internet s- people or whatever, I just, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I hate it. Yeah, it's a lot. Um, h- happy to have you on the show today. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah. I didn't know if we had started yet or if we were just shooting the shit about uh, repairs. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I, sometimes I, I start it out of the blue and then sometimes yeah. I, uh. I'll be like, hey, we're doing it live <laughs> it here felt on the natural. show. Felt yeah, natural that felt way. an organic little opening. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you are uh, you're somebody who I've I've known for a long time, and uh, I always enjoy when our paths cross. Yeah. In comedy, me um, too. Whether it be random New York passings or L. A. Yeah. You've been. You freaking, you're a freaking grinder, and I appreciate that. Thank you. I yeah. Same to you, man. I'm always like, anytime I see you post something that's good news, you're one of those people that I'm always like genuinely happy for. Like, oh, man. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I feel the same way for you, 100%. Thanks. I was super stoked for you when uh, you got The Tonight Show. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, that was a crazy thing. And um, I know that you know, like, when you get something big, there's just, there's so much that goes into it. It's never just yeah. like, oh, I sent this tape and then I did it. It's like, <laughs> it took no, me, it's... took me like a year of, like, sending tapes getting notes going back to the drawing board just grinding and changing things and i'm actually i'm really grateful now that it took so long because by the time i got onto the show it was like oh thank god i'm using this material and not what i had submitted a year ago but Uh, um yeah yeah it's it's such a crazy business so what's that process like for for somebody who who is just like a fan of the tonight show who just they're like oh this is uh, another comedian guest who happens <laughs> to be on. Yeah. So basically, you uh, if you decide that you want to try for a late night show, you have to kind of go into it thinking, all right, which one do I want to do? Because there are very different rules. All have their own flavors and styles yeah. and different stuff like that. Yeah. And I think uh, most importantly for comedians, like what level of um, filth, I guess. Like yeah. Tonight Show is as clean as it gets it it has to be so squeaky clean uh it's nbc it's it's jimmy fallon it's that whole brand and so um i kind of i mean doing the tonight show had been a dream of mine for forever as it is for like most every comic it's sure that's the tonight show show. Yeah, yeah um but i think for me it also was like i wanted to prove to myself that i was capable of having like a really really strong squeaky clean five minutes yeah um well it's not an easy thing especially for well most comedians yeah you know to to have that is like that's a big feat to kind of conquer yeah and i felt like that muscle of mine had not really been getting worked at all because at that point i had been on the road with jim norton for like two years and his crowd and kind of what my I feel like my natural comedy voice is does lean dirtier sure and so I was just like every weekend on the road saying just so many cum jokes <laughs> and it's like well I can't I could kind of practice some of the tonight show stuff uh there but I mean his crowds really love the dirty stuff. now if you tried to do more of a clean set would you kind of feel the pull yes. of the audience being like oh when are you gonna get to the more fun yes. stuff yes i mean 
especially if I opened a little dirty and then tried to like slip into the clean. <laughs> they're like, uh, uh-uh, uh, bitch. Yeah, no, no, no. You you already showed us the good stuff. That's what we <laughs> <Yeah>. want. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I could tell right away. So it's kind of like a right time and place to work on the super clean stuff. And it, it's the same thing with dirty. You can go into a club that's predominantly clean comics, and if you start to be dirty, people can pull back so fast. So yeah, it's all about reading the room, I guess. But um, yeah. So I. I put together a five minute set, sent it to the the booker who gave me notes, and um, I just quickly realized it's it's not even notes that are like, oh hey, you can't say this word. It's like, hey, our demographic wouldn't understand this reference, or uh, um, I don't think this would play well, or this that, needs to be. And stronger. those are kind of hard notes to yes. take. You know what I mean? Yes. Because they're specific, and you're like, but that's the the yeah. joke yes you know like the so did you find yourself having to to replace a lot of jokes oh yeah and and that was hard um because when i watched the tape back there were parts of it where i'm like oh it's hard to even like recognize myself for my jokes because i had to make a lot of them much more vanilla than they are like uh, just at a regular show yeah um but you know again it's like it's the tonight show it's so exciting and i'm like i had a blast and i'm so lucky i got to do it so yeah 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 that's so cool (laughs) thanks yeah, and uh, you're working on, uh, uh, you just got done recording your album. Yeah. And just, it just came out, right? Yeah, just released uh, my first album last week. I had recorded it at Comedy Works in Denver. Have you done Comedy Works? I love that club. Oh, my God. Doesn't it ruin you for, like, any club for the next, like, half a year? <laughs> I mean, it's one of those things, like, whenever clubs are great like that, it's like that and, uh, like, the La Jolla Comedy Store. Mm, I haven't done that one. I've heard it's amazing. It's very similar to comedy or works where as soon as you are done like your next couple sets like there's gonna maybe be a bomb in your upcoming future because <laughs> yeah. you're like you're just like planting a little bit too hard like because you're like this is gonna cry oh yeah. no okay <laughs> all right let's get to the next joke yeah i'm a comedy genius yeah. oh you hate me oh yeah. okay perfect right back to the drum oh, okay. No, okay yeah, yeah uh perfect. yeah comedy works is is bananas how nice those crowds are and how well run that club is and so I hadn't even, like, I wasn't recording a CD that night. I just uh, had a headlining show, and it went well, and they had the audio. And I was just sitting on that file for, like, three months, and John Heffred, who's a comedian I uh, perform with sometimes, was like, just put that out there. Like, send it to the record label, and they will put it out, and you will, like, get more exposure and make money. You're just sitting on a thing yeah and I was like okay and sure enough I did and so I I got really fortunate that I kind of like bypassed the stress of like okay this has to be perfect and I have to crush it oh and I have to pay. so you were super loose and yeah it was yeah. just a show that got recorded instantly and so um I'm like I'm so type a and such a perfectionist I think I would have made it a really shitty experience for myself if I had actually planned to record a cd so um of course like I recorded it probably six months ago and now it's coming out and uh, like a lot of those jokes have changed already in six different months. tags yeah. different yeah stuff like that yeah so i think that's always hard but that's just like what this job I is that's part of the craft I yes mean, you know you gotta you gotta let them free eventually yeah. and, and then bye exactly <laughs> work on the new stuff yeah i think i don't know if it was like maybe picasso who said that a painting's never finished it just stops in interesting places uh. and i always like that for comedy too but like you could kind of continue to fix a joke or change it a billion times you kind of could forever keep yeah. expanding on it but yeah. like if you put out a an album or a special it's like all right it's done yeah no. that's it that's it it's finished cooking yeah so <laughs> yeah that's uh, that's the album it's called savor it it's on itunes and um there's like a pandora channel now so it's like that's a nice thing to have um a thing that's out there that i don't have to do anything with now yeah you know what i mean like it's i don't have to stress about it it's just a show that got recorded and now it's out there like hopefully getting more fans which Good. is nice so yeah heck yeah yeah <laughs> heck yeah heck yeah heck yeah bro heck yeah bro i mean <laughs> freaking like sometimes you just gotta like put out content dude and like you gotta be proud of it but like you know sometimes it happens to be a freaking comedy album that's dope and people should check out dude <laughs> <laughs> whoever that is i love oh uh, hey what's up <laughs> it's kind of like hi theo vaughn <laughs> like it's like not as much of a twang but it's kind yeah. of that cadence hey what what's up Hedda? how you doing man <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. I love your impressions. Your singing impressions genuinely blow me away. They're oh, so good. Very you do some great impressions too. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Just I haven't seen ones. you posting as much of that stuff lately. No. It just it, like sometimes I'll just get a random like bug up my ass where I'm like, I want to put out a quick little 60 second impression yeah. video. Didn't we do, I think we did some showcase together. Was it the Mad TV showcase that we did together or something? Yes. I think we did, right? Yes. At the Laugh Factory. Yes. And I don't really do, I don't do like impressions on stage, but sometimes I'll do like different voices, I guess, if I'm talking about a yeah. different character. But um, yeah, it'll just be random. Like it was maybe a couple of months ago, Kane and I were watching Men in Black and a lot of time, you know, when you're watching a movie and you see somebody say something funny and then you just kind of repeat it. And I repeated, what, what's that guy's name? The alien. The sugar water guy? Sugar water guy. He has a name <laughs> and I forget his fucking um, name. Uh, I don't remember. Damn it. It's going to bother me. But like, yeah, the the guy whose body gets taken over by an alien, Kane and I just started repeating it and Kane was like, oh my God, you actually sound exactly like it. So we just put that shit on Instagram. So it's just random. I'm never like really seeking it but you know it's weird i think the sugar water guy from men in black is actually calling into the <laughs> show right now <laughs> yeah i don't know how he got the number this podcast is very popular but uh i guess he's calling in uh sorry i don't uh your name is actually showing up in some alien language on the caller id right now uh buddy but uh is are you from uh the men hello? In black? uh he hello a dead man came in here earlier he was a dear friend of mine he has something that belongs to me. A pet cat. Uh, oh, <laughs> I, there's no pet cats here. Uh, I don't, I'm not a, a cat guy. I'm sorry. Do you have any syrup or crackers? But mostly syrup. Uh, um, I have syrup and crackers. Do you want me to go get some for Both. you? Both. Um, okay, is there anything else that I can get you? Do you have any live animals? I don't have any live animals here, but I'm I'm a little bit afraid that you might kill me. <laughs> I am hungry. I can't. <laughs> it's cutting out. I don't this know. We, so we, we we lost the call. Uh, but it was it was crazy that he just called in. Isn't out, that uh, weird? Just on a whim. That was actually so much worse than what I remember being capable <laughs> of doing. It didn't sound like it to me in my in the headphones. I was like, that doesn't. That just sounds like me talking in a low voice. Well, I don't know. Tr try doing it in uh, this normal mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is like I don't ever practice this. It's just it's probably gonna be bad. I'm, pu I'm putting you on the spot. This it's is, okay. This is what you he can says. put me on the spot. I'll. You know what? I'll do. I'll do one that I usually don't do. Okay. On the spot Did, after this because okay. you can dust it off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. This is. It's the scene when he goes into <laughs> the funeral room or okay. the funeral home, yeah. and he's like, "A man came in." <sighs> See, that's too southern. He's not southern. He's a little is southern. He? Yeah, yeah. A man came in here earlier. A dead man. <laughs> he had something that belonged to me. He was a dear friend. He had a pet cat. It's not, <laughs> it's not it. Damn We're it. getting warmer. We're I getting wanna, warmer. I'm just going to play the Instagram video into the mic and then because that one sounded like it. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you do your thing. Uh, I don't know. I just pimped you into into doing that random thing. I don't know. Uh, I have to find it on Instagram. What's the thing you're going to do? I don't. I don't know. What? Uh, I guess. I What's like a new singing impression you're working on? Oh, interesting. Um, Is there anybody that's like tickling your fancy lately? Where you're like, oh, I want to. I want to do that. I'm trying to think of. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I've been. Um, I've really been enjoying Portugal, the man lately. Oh. Um. But that's like just kind of a, a falsetto-y kind of voice. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll yeah I'll try to do Port Portugal the, the man. Um, uh, I keep my hands to myself. Uh huh. My hands to I keep my hands on myself. Ooh. Think I'm supposed to move to the back on a shelf. <laughs> and a little baby girl has a knee, and I'm coming out of left field. Ooh, I'm a rebel, that's a kickstart. Get to feeling like it's 1966 now. I don't want no love, but I feel it still. Got another mouth to feed. And then <laughs> oh my that. god, I loved that. You can go so high. I can go pretty high. Dude, that sounded amazing. I was, uh, you know, I've said it on this podcast before, but I was, uh, 
uh, I was the only uh, alto in the choir in grade school that was a boy. So <laughs> whoa, <laughs> yeah. So you know, just dropping some credits. Jeez, <laughs> yeah. just those shoulders off. Yeah, son. right. Uh-huh. Okay, it's Edgar, by the way. That's okay, the okay. alien. It's name. Edgar from Men in Black. Okay, let's see. If did you watch the other Men in Blacks? I did, but they were not. They're not. It's a little bit of a letdown on nostalgia. Well, of course, I know. Yeah, but okay. This is all right. Here we go. From Men in Black, go. A man came in here earlier. <laughs> a dead man. It was a dear friend of mine. He had a pet cat. <laughs> that's better there. I think that's better there than huh? in person. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed both versions. I really like that that you double down and you're like, no, I can do it better. I have proof. Here's the Instagram video. Past me can do it better. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't practice enough to like be able to do them good on the well, spot. Well, it's interesting. Impressions and just like singing is is like such a muscle, like stand up is that if you're not doing voices yeah. on the rig, you'll you'll go back and do. An impression that you used to be able to kill, and you're like, oh, I don't, I don't have, I don't have the nuances anymore. It's really yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I find Edgar. myself being a crazy person in my car, just like doing voices and singing all like every day. I'm just like, Lot. like if you see me driving, like I'm either <laughs> like, I'm either somebody said that I look like an old Asian man while I'm driving because I'm just like, just like completely straight posture, just like spacing out and just like, like looking straight ahead, or I'm just like. <laughs> just the car wash floaty dude yeah yeah <laughs> a wacky waiver that's actually my father is a wacky waiver a wacky that waver. you see at the, all the auto that makes sense genetically yeah. that makes sense genetically i mean it makes sense i yeah. actually have no bones in my body <laughs> <laughs> just a fluid man <laughs> just jello bones yeah just jello wiggly bones. jello <laughs> <laughs> they call me jello bones <laughs> i had this uh this uh friend female comic uh who um she was a larger girl and she always just called me skin and bones she's like hey skin and bones <laughs> uh, let's work on some different nicknames for me uh there's some more flattering ones that i could maybe think of but i am made of more than that i but. you know i just got a heart in here too <laughs> but, skin and bones that's skin and just bones. A be- yeah it's beautiful yep i hope yep. you keep that up <laughs> when did you how long have you been uh, out here in los angeles um coming up on four years all right. And where, yeah. where were you before that? I was in Seattle. So I'm from Washington State originally. Okay. Um, originally from like the eastern side, which is not the cool area. Like Seattle's the, the cool part. That's like of, the more hipster yeah, side and everything. Yeah, like Pike Place Market and Starbucks. It's just, you know, Jimi Hendrix and Kurt Cobain. And then Spokane yeah. is just like meth. <laughs> it's just like we were the meth capital in America for a really long time. So that's where I'm from. Nice. Um, Do you have like... I like uh, like my family is from Kansas and Iowa and I would oh you know them. I would consider uh, what um you know are you white w- trash too yeah what's up man yeah, yeah. I didn't want to just go out of my way to call you white trash no, right now please, but um please I think uh, you know it. I sensed another white trash person <laughs> <laughs> you can my, uh, smell it in people you really can it's something in the DNA yeah, yeah. those are my favorite shows are in like white tra- like I fucking love performing in like Albuquerque in they let Reno. loose. Because it's just there, you you sense it. You like connect with the trash inside each yep. other, and mm-hmm. there's no nobody's pretentious. Nobody's you know, it's just real people. Yeah, Love and it. they almost like that you're calling out the obvious. Sometimes, yeah. like if you're like, you know, we come from the same yeah worn out cloth. You know, <laughs> yeah. I just was saying on uh, on our podcast, uh, self helpless podcast, we were talking about what's like the grossest things we ate as children, and I like. On the reg used to eat uh, Wonder Bread with mayo. Oh, that's <laughs> a rough one. Just mayo sandwiches. I've been doing this uh, <laughs> this uh, this bit on stage uh, about s- some of the stuff that I used to eat. Yeah. Um, and one of the things was, uh, and we still eat it, and I lo- and I love it. Uh, they're called pizza boats, <laughs> and it's literally uh, it's like French bread that's like cut in half. Oh. And it's it's uh, it's a DIY pizza. It's just like <laughs> sauce, cheese, and pepperonis, like Dude, that baked in amazing. an oven. They they are amazing. I will never judge you for that. Oh yeah, that's just a good decision. It's really really good. I don't think there's anything trash. But about I don't it. think mm, it's. <laughs> you should see. It's em. a little it's a little makeshift. It's it's makeshift but... for sure. 
I mean, anything with French bread, I'll fucking eat it. I mean, it's really good. Like, that's that's the fancy stuff, the French yeah. bread. Oh, yeah. It's not even from here. Right? <laughs> it's not even from our country. What are you talking about? <laughs> they fucking imported it. They imported this bread? <laughs> are you kidding me right now? Man, I'm going to shove this in my gullet immediately. I'm going to savor every single bite of this. <laughs> oh, it's I love good. being trash. I mean, my whole, like... Like, I wouldn't exist if it weren't for professional foosball. Like, I'm, that's, that doesn't get trashier than that. You know what I mean? So, how does somebody pursue a profession in foosball? In like, foosball. How, how, do you, how do you, like, become pro at that? I mean, I'm sure there's tournaments just like everything else, but it, yeah. it's, it feels like something that's a little bit harder to get into than some other sports. Yeah. I mean, so my mom, my mom has been playing now for, like, 45 years yeah. she's in the foosball hall of fame it's a whole thing and so when she was in college that's when like the foosball boom kind of started and they started putting foosball tables in bars all over america is there and any documentaries or anything about this yeah mm -hmm. there there's is. one okay. that's like a, it's supposed to be coming out on netflix soon which i'm in it's very cool oh really yeah wow. yeah okay we'll see if it you know how it is with documentaries where yeah. it's like well we'll see but um but they did a great job and it looks amazing um so that's when it started to get bigger, and then all of a sudden, they started having organized tournaments, and then there were, like, foosball tours, where it was like, okay, in all these cities, uh, a big, like, ballroom and a hotel or whatever will be rented out, and it's going to be foosball tables just, like, r lining the walls, and then there's different events, and there's, like, a point system. It's ranked, so if you get first, you win money and a certain amount of points that add to, like, what rank you are. Okay. So the more times you win the higher up you go until it's like you're ranked as a professional. Wow. Yeah. That sounds kind of insane, like the yeah. process behind it. Yeah, I mean, you have to like dedicate a lot of your life. I can't go to as many tournaments anymore, which bums me out, but like if you're like a working comic, it, you don't have that m many free weekends or whatever to just like randomly fly to Kentucky and yeah, p play foosball for four days straight. Y it reminds me a little bit of uh, like, uh, have you ever seen Judah Friedlander play ping pong? I haven't seen him play, but he and I talk, like, anytime we see each other, we're like, hey, man, how's ping pong? How's foosball? Yeah. We, yeah. No, yeah. He, I'm sure he's, like, respect because he yeah. he's so good. I've played him uh, only once, and <laughs> um, it was in a tournament at uh, in Moon Tower. Oh, okay. At, uh, in Austin, Texas for that comedy festival. Yeah. And uh, I have gotten to the finals the last, like, several years of doing it. So you're good. I'm like pretty good until I come across somebody like Judah who's right. just like they're putting like an, an insane amount of spin and stuff on it. Yeah. And like I have like a little bit of like some tricks up my sleeve, but it's just from like playing in basements with like buddies and stuff right, like that. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can beat the average person because I will wait for the other person. I can volley really well. So okay. I'll, I'll wait for them to try to slam me or something and start tripping up on themselves. Okay. Okay. Uh oh, I just told my technique out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh oh, what Are you gonna have I to done? edit this out? Yeah, I'm gonna have to cut that out. Well, you're uh, rabid ping pong competitors <laughs> listening. All the all the ping pong <laughs> listeners out there are like, oh, I can't wait to play Jeremiah <laughs> <Eureka>! now. <laughs> exactly. I know it. Yeah. Yeah, he I played him and it was it was next level. Yeah. It was it was like immediately like, Oh, I'm gonna lose right, right now. And then he took the whole thing, like he got first and Yeah. Yeah. Uh but that seems like what? What's the kind of person, the average person, would you say that you run across of like the type of personality who oh, is Lord. a competitor in foosball? It's, I mean, again, like not to beat the white trash thing to death, but it is kind of a white trash sport, and I think it um, it attracts a lot of people that maybe um, do spend a lot of time in bars and then get good at something uh, in okay. a bar and then keep going with it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you see you see people with, <laughs> this like... This tournament is sponsored by Natty Ice. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's so much drinking at foosball tournaments, like, legit. Do people get wasted while they're yeah, playing? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Some people feel like they play better with alcohol, which I guess is the same as comedy. Some people feel like they're funnier with alcohol. I can't have any alcohol in my system when I play foosball. That's just called an alcoholic. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, I swear. I am better at this the more drunk I am. Yeah, I'm a better driver. I'm Seriously, telling you. <laughs> give me the test right now. I will walk. I will moonwalk that line right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's a lot of people with like, who are like missing teeth and, uh, and, and they're like, ah, they're number six in the country. Yeah, no, seriously. It's, <laughs> wow. 
it's pretty crazy but uh, and again i'm like i'm stereotyping for the sake of comedy there are a lot of like wonderful like very educated very uh, <laughs> dun, dun, hygienic, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> hygienic hello people. i'm here for the tournament where do i sign up <laughs> <laughs> okay there's nobody like that that's <laughs> that's too far hello me and my family of foosball <laughs> players are here to take on the cook family legacy <laughs> <laughs> Where are you and your mother? I've heard all about you and seen you on the Netflix documentaries. <laughs> I like that voice too. I love your voices. I'm endlessly entertained by them. Yeah, so that's just rich foosball players. Yeah, that's that's a real weird thing to picture. But I mean, the people who are at like the top of the the rankings do make pretty decent money because yeah. they're just getting first at every tournament. So oh yeah, just but like uh, the people who get good at um. Basically, like uh, like Texas Hold'em and different stuff like yeah. that. You start making a living. I mean, there's people who that is how they make their living. Like yeah. they crush it doing all these different tournaments and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that's the same with foosball. The guy who's like number one lives in Florida and just like he like lives in an RV, so he just can drive to each different tournament and get first and just like bank a bunch of money. Yeah, I don't think that there's anything like that for comedians. I don't think comedians could hop around doing comedy festivals and be like, I'm just so funny all the time. <laughs> oh, God, no. It's so much more subjective. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like... Well, there's not ever like a clear, like you said, subjective. Like, I've done a handful of uh, competitions. Not very many, just because I don't like personally that it is so subjective yeah it's such a i hate that they've even ever existed you yeah. know what i mean i wish they had never been invented for for comedians because it's like how can yeah you how do, do you that? what's the meter what's the gauge yeah. here you put a different set of judges and a different crowd in front of any group of people it will be a different result every night yeah you know i don't know all right 90s bands what are some of your favorite 90s oh bands? Because we grew up, uh, um, you know, in that same era of, yeah. uh, of music and everything. So I'm curious uh, whenever. Uh, That's so great. Did you just randomly think to ask that? Because we yeah. just talked about this on our podcast and it's like my favorite thing to talk about. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. May maybe I saw an Instagram thing or something, but I don't know. Oh, my God. Um, oh, I love the 90s so much. Yep. I mean, definitely into like the pop. Can't not love in sync. And Britney oh, and yeah, the boy band. For, for sure. But also loved like Matchbox 20, Dave Matthews, mm -hmm. Red Chili Peppers. <laughs> what did it, like, tell me where you're at. Where do you live in that area? Uh, I agree with you on pretty much all that. I never got into Dave Matthews like crazy hard. Okay. Uh, but <laughs> I, uh, my mom used to have uh, uh, her, uh, her boyfriend had this giant poster <laughs> in uh in her old house that was a uh, a dave matthews band poster yeah like we're talking you know bigger than that poster oh my right god there. like and that's a pretty that's a movie size poster that's to your left oh my um god. so it was bigger than that and it was so funny there's <laughs> there is uh you know the, the band surrounding dave and one of the guys like <laughs> i don't know why this wasn't photoshopped but they like a couple like this dude did not lotion his hands and he just has like the driest hand like on dave matthews <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we and have to find that it's picture it's literally all i can see <laughs> in the photo it's just like this chapped hand i'm just like who's the makeup artist on set that day put can some we get lotion some user in? can we get something can we get some vaseline or something on the set right now it's literally i walked down like it went to the downstairs basement of our place and it's literally Just all i you. could see every day was a chapped hand <laughs> around dave matthews arm anyway we we have to find that photo like yeah. we have to google image and just well. see let me see if I can find it. Because I have a, an idea in my head of their, like, I think it's one of their album covers that's a very popular picture of them as a group. And I'm wondering if that's what it is. Uh, it could be. Um, so I love Red Hot Chili Peppers. They're um, one of my favorite bands of all I time. Mean, Maybe number one, actually. So I um, I will, uh, to calm myself down on uh, on planes and stuff like that, I'll listen to, I have a, a handful of mixes of yes, best ofs that yes. I listen to. And Red Hot Chili Peppers is one of them. I have a best of of Red Hot Chili Peppers, uh, Muse. Ooh, good choice. Linkin Park. Nice. Uh, Enya to put me to sleep. Look at you. I, I listen to Enya. I love it. It, she puts me to sleep like 
Instantly. Yeah, well, it would probably feel like you're in like a massage therapy session or something. Pretty much, uh, but uh, no, I'm just in a spirit flight, just <laughs> hating my life. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. <laughs> it was a nice massage. Yeah. Um, yeah, like Stadium Arcadium, that double disc set. It's amazing. It's just, I mean, I will never ever get sick of it. I think that's just so good. I saw them live for the first time. I think it was like two years ago at Staples, and it was oh. They're so good. I want to see them live pretty bad. It was amazing. The thing is, it's like, I feel like you leave a little disappointed, though, not in their performance, but just because they have so many hits at this point that if they were to play all of their hits plus the stuff from whatever, like, their newest album is, it would be an eight-hour show. Well, how long have they been a band now? I mean... Oh, God. 30 years? Yeah. Something crazy? Something, Something crazy like that. Longer, maybe. But uh, yeah, I I left like ah oh, I didn't play this I didn't play this I'm like if they were to do that it, we'd be here for a day so um, I think they do what they can but live they were incredible did you find the photo no I, I'm, I'm starting to think that there's so many like tour posters and stuff oh, out yeah. there that like they're another band that's been around for so long yeah that's a lot of photos to go oh, through oh here it is <gasps> you found it. I'm so excited. Oh, it's kind of grainy, but... Okay. <laughs> this dude's hand. Oh, my <laughs> Lord. It's just Jesus. like all chest and stuff. I don't know if that's just his hand, but I think it's just it's just a dry hand. <laughs> what? I'm going to have to put... It's so funny because like, the other people's hands are also showing yeah. in this picture. A- and they and look just fine. Th- it just got neglected. Like, no... <laughs> Need some need chapstick little, or something little, on that. A little cream. Oh my god, that's so funny. Yeah. So that's uh that's what I saw every uh, day. I'll Haunted have to put you. uh I'll have to have Gage put a uh, uh, a picture. Uh, Gage is my buddy who uh, edits this uh, oh, nice. podcast. Shout out to Gage T Arena in What's Texas. Up? What up, Gage? What's up, Gage? Uh, who else do you like? I so I loved um uh I was a big boy band guy. I liked a lot of the boy bands. Fuck yes. Um. Backstreet Boys. I loved LFO. That was a little bit more towards the 2000s. I always, it always breaks my heart that one of them passed away. Oh, yeah. It's so sad. Uh, but yeah, they were great. They were playing. This is so so weird. Uh, one of the uh, venues that uh, Tony Hinchcliffe and I were doing last year for his tour was in uh, Decatur, uh, Georgia. And they were playing. Then the LFO was at the same place the next week, and I was like, "What? Uh, this is like, you know, it's like an okay size venue." But I felt kind of bad just yeah. because I'm like, they were freaking giant. They were huge. And I guess the the staff that had seen them there, they're like, "Yeah, it's it's kind of sad because they talk about their friend a lot, and uh, oh. they dedicate songs to him and stuff." Oh, and I'm that's like, so Ugh. sad. Yeah, that's like a tough environment to like party and dance and have fun. Yeah. In. You uh you I, I've heard that uh that you you do like a Britney Spears uh oh God. impression. Oh, I just felt my stomach drop. I'm not prepared for any of these impressions, <laughs> Jeremiah. I well, didn't know. Well, it's a good thing that that you're. Uh, I won't make you do an impression, but you know what's weird? Britney Spears is calling in right now. <laughs> I fucking hate you. I uh it's so I I, she, I don't she know how to talk on, like um, her. Um, uh, I think um you know what. She called. She called. She called to just uh, to just be singing uh, one of her songs. Actually, uh, she called in. I, I guess she just wants to be a music guest on the show. It's very weird. Britney Spears is. It's is this you call? Hello. Uh, uh, hello. Is this, Jer- is this Jeremiah? Uh, yeah. Oh no! I think my microphone is breaking up. Is it okay? Yeah, I think it's okay now. Okay, I'm gonna sing a little something for you, Jeremiah. Uh, all right. Okay. I'm so into you, you got that something, what can I do? Oh my gosh, I'm really sorry Jeremiah, I'm getting over a cold and I'm just, I'm like, I'm not really in key and I'm not Brittany, pitch. I don't know what you're talking about, I know you've been in Vegas for a while uh, and you know, it might be affecting your hearing and stuff like that, but that was pretty freaking great. Well, you know... Everybody talks about that. I don't have a good voice, but you you have a great voice, Brittany. Don't don't get down on yourself. But they're right. And I've been also <laughs> smoking a lot of crack out here because Are you hanging out with Kevin Federline again? Have you seen him? He's irresistible. Irresistible. Uh, you did it again. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um 
Well, thanks for calling in to, to sing. I know, uh, like, uh, you know, it might have been a little bit forced call. Like, I, I did text you to call in, but... I need at least three days to warm up. Three days? That's... I don't think that's very professional at all. That That's a lot. You don't know what it's like to be just a girl. Uh-huh. And not a woman. Jeremiah, I feel like the microphone is really fucking me up. <laughs> it's fucking my shit up. Uh, I can hear that. I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, what exactly? <laughs> Are you good? I just had to do a line, that's all. You just did a line of Coke or yeah. crack? Both. Well, thanks for calling in, Brittany. Uh, we can't support your drug use on the show. I hope you get the help that you need. Thanks, Jeremiah. I'm going to take my kids to the playground now. Bye, Bye. Wow. She was uh she said my name very uh sensually. Um but you know, <laughs> she's I guess breathy that's like that. She's, she's breathy. Little, it's Brittany bitch. <laughs> wow. That have is so seen, have you seen her so live long. before? Oh my god, I have and I cried. And this was not that long ago. Really? <laughs> and I weeped like a small child yeah we uh we went this was in vegas maybe three or four years ago and uh she had that residency yeah planet hollywood she doesn't sing for any of it by the way for literally like two hours she she's doesn't just sing. like <laughs> just, <laughs> just a puppet she yep yep exactly that uh-huh. that's what it looked like and uh, a, lot of, a lot of body rolls and a lot stuff. of body rolls yeah. uh just yeah didn't i mean like we could hear her voice when she would talk to us in between songs but no singing which was a bummer she's I wish lip synced have... everything yeah wow yeah i feel like do you remember that uh the jessica simpson moment on snl whenever her uh, ashley simpson or ashley simpson sorry ashley yes simpson. oh and that like her track like skipped and she like got all off and everything yeah i felt like that was literally the first time like, I feel like that's been done many times on yeah. live shows and SNL, but it was the first time I feel like the U.S. was like, wait a second, they don't always sing their own songs whenever they do it live. <laughs> right. I thought it was perfect every time. Yeah. No, that was such a, I'll never forget that. And she just started like doing an Irish jig. Do you remember that on stage? Like she was so embarrassed. She just didn't know what to do. She just started dancing and her song is still just playing in the background. Yeah. She just dancing to it and like not singing and then it cut away. I was so, so deeply I feel like if I was, if that would have happened to me, I would have just like turned my back (laughs) to the audience and just started like, (laughs) kind of like, you oh know, my doing, God, that's so smart. Doing like a DJ kind of thing. Yeah. Like, 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 like just, I don't know, but that's easy to quarterback it from being like, if I was Ashley Simpson on as well, that's what I would have done. No, that makes perfect sense. That's that, that probably rather than the whole being thing. like, Oh no, what's hey. happening right now? Yeah. Let me clearly show you my mouth. That is not moving along with the music. You're right. Yeah. She should have just turned her back. Yeah. <laughs> so an experimental thing. What are your uh, what are your like two thousands music? Were you into? I was like big into like hip hop, R and B, like a little like Nelly, little jagged edge. I loved Nelly. I actually wish that Nelly uh, was more present. I know in all of our lives. I know, right? We need him. Yeah, uh, like uh, twenty eighteen Jesus. My uh, my mom loved Nelly too. Really? My mom has an eclectic mix. <laughs> Good for your we mom. Grew up, we grew up on oldies. Uh, and classic rock in the car, but then we would like she was like down to listen to, like Backstreet Boys and Smash Mouth. Another, oh, uh, I mean, absolutely, gotta get yeah. some Smash Mouth. I can't get enough of you, baby. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> it's so good. That's so good. Do you remember when they did um the song for Shrek? Oh yeah. I thought I do yeah. it. Then I saw her face. <laughs> yeah, I'm a believer. <laughs> You just you commit so hard. It's so impressive. It's so good. It it like makes it so good. <laughs> Shrek is a great movie. Kane and I just rewatched it. We were on the road in Boise and we were like, oh shit, it's on Netflix. So good. So good. It's re- it's really good. Shrek two and three, they're pretty good, but that first one is Untouchable. 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 So good. But people say they think that the Toy Story Two is sometimes oh. better than Toy Story One. I don't know. I never remember Toy Story Two. I need yeah. to go back. Uh, so you are engaged now. I am. Congratulations. 
Thank Boom. you. Boom. What up? Part of that club, Gotta yo. Gotta show that ice, Gotta show bitch. it. Huh. The ice queen over here. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Off the market. What's up, boys? <laughs> I think that's such a funny thing to do when it's like such, like it's such like a moderately sized ring. It's like nothing. And <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, like yeah. <laughs> um, read it and wait. You're like, so. um, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry uh sorry uh my left arm has been uh, a little weak lately it's been holding all this weight sorry if i'm walking like, <laughs> i just show up in a sling yeah i pulled something sorry so. i don't know it's just this really heavy stone that's on my <laughs> left hand i just <laughs> you start like walking with a, <laughs> with a limp <laughs> like what's wrong with kelsey she got engaged yeah. uh she really wants people to know <laughs> it's like a shallow house situation where like i think the rock is like so much bigger than yeah. it is the, just, that would be the best disease for any man to, absolutely. to have for, oh my for his girl. Oh, my God. Dude, yeah. I got her a ring pop. <laughs> she, <laughs> she thinks it's a diamond. Mine blue, man. This is crazy. It's so, I didn't realize until we were getting into um, like that ring process that it's not just that the girls want a nice ring. You guys want to get us a nice ring. I think most dudes do because it's such a reflection on you mm. as a partner like in society everybody's like oh you know if the guy gets him a, like a little shitty ring and doesn't spend much money then like that dude's a douche did you feel any pressure when you got your uh, your wife's ring um my, i feel like our situation was pretty unique because she made it clear to me that she wasn't a size queen or anything <laughs> whenever <laughs> it came to hey, yo. diamonds yeah, or, you know what yeah, i mean yeah like uh she made it clear like she's like i the important thing is like that we're getting married and everything. yeah I was like, oh well. good woman so we uh we uh actually got um her and uh like an antique ring like, oh that's so amazing yeah that's from like the 40s or the 50s that's so fucking cool and i like the idea that literally nobody else has that ring it's one yeah of kind. well and we uh we found it in um uh have you heard of the like that german town uh solving uh that's like in towards oh. northern california yeah yeah it's like a it's like it's like a german like disneyland kind of it's like Fuck all these yeah. little shops yeah. and like restaurants like and stuff village. and they had they had like uh, uh an antique uh uh jewelry store there and that's, that's so where, cool yeah so that's, that's, awesome. that's what we did uh for our so i didn't feel the normal pressure, but I have a lot of buddies who are getting engaged and have gotten engaged that they're they're like freaking out, like, dude, I gotta set aside like uh, a bajillion months <laughs> of uh, <laughs> of rent and uh, and work, and then uh, and then uh, that only covers the first down payment. And, yeah, it's yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I definitely I was like going toward the other end of the spectrum where I was showing Kane some rings, like, hey, like I think this would look nice, and they were just like the saddest most unattractive rings that cost like nothing and he was like he's like number one i know that that's not actually what you want and like i appreciate you trying to be nice to my budget but two like i don't want to get you that ring yeah, yeah like yeah. that makes me look like shit <laughs> and like you wouldn't even like that ring but this is the second time we've been engaged i don't know if you know no that. how what's the story behind that we got engaged after eight months of being together we, we've been together almost seven years now okay but we first got engaged like eight months in we were just being impulsive comedians just you know people with like no sense of if this is like the actual right thing to do in the long scheme of things and so um we were in also like an antique shop in my hometown and they had a bunch of it was basically like costume jewelry and so they weren't actual diamonds it was like cubic zirconia and there was this one for like 40 dollars. i just fell in love with it and i was like that, like that's my ring like mm -hmm. that's the one i want and he was like okay well it's like, good to know I'll, I'll come back and get it and i was like no like it's gonna somebody's gonna take it it's one of a kind like you like you have to get it now and then just like hold on to it until you want to actually propose to me and he's like this is not at all how i like you're taking all the magic out of it like you're not letting me have any you know what i mean and i was like no like i, I this is really what i want i promise like this I, I won't find a ring i love more for this price and then he was like well i don't i don't have 40 dollars right now like we were both just like such starving artists sure and i was like okay and the the woman behind the counter was trying so hard to make it happen. She's like, w we can do it for uh, 25. And I was like, you know, turned to him with like wide eyes, like, oh, look, she's, she's working with us. And he's like, I don't have $25. <laughs> like, I just, he got so emasculated. It was a horrible, like I have to, t I have to talk about this now as like a <gasps> joke because I was such a monster. And she was like, well, what do you have? And he was like, I have $13. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. I and, mean, 
So I bought my own ring. I bought my own <laughs> ring. Hear that, fellas? A go-getter right here. <laughs> no, a monster. <laughs> that's like the worst. Like I, That's the worst thing you can put your guy through is to be like, I will and buy my own ring. <laughs> and you're like, so... Can I get that thirteen dollars? <laughs> because uh, I need uh, I need that for the, yeah. the payment. So. Yeah, no, he, he's I, like oh, he's he's sliding the change over. Yeah. <laughs> he's like Nichols. emptying like things out of his socks and stuff. Oh my god! Yeah, so like I don't even know who those two people were he to take, look back on that. Out, he takes out one of his fillings yeah. and his, <laughs> his teeth, <laughs> puts it on the counter. Like, yeah, sawing teeth. Uh, uh, any anything else you need? Yeah. Yeah, it was so bad. So I bought my ring and then he paid me back like the next month. And then he tried to surprise me with a proposal. Hey, I I found this (laughs) ring (laughs) that you bought. (laughs) That you bought. It was like we could not have fucked it up more the first time. And like he he got nervous and thought that I was going to spoil the proposal. So he just like randomly got on a knee as we were on a walk and... I, like it, it just it's this whole bigger story but anyway we completely fucked everything up we were engaged for maybe six to eight months mm-hmm. had started planning a wedding and then realized like th- okay none of this was supposed to happen now right like, we fucked every part of this up and we're like arguing all the time we're really stressed out i was like 22 at the time yeah. so i was like i don't know what i'm even doing well i think part of that like uh you coming from uh, you said the Seattle-ish area. Yeah, well, being born and raised in Spokane, which being is more like being born and raised in, in Spokane. Yeah, and then most of Seattle. your friends totally. probably were getting married around that time. Totally, so that's kind of what you knew. I'm assuming. Yes. And so you're like, no, this is I. I'm around the age of like you know, I'm not I'm not a fresh <laughs> pup anymore. I'm only 22 <laughs> years old. My time is running out here. I'm All a- my friends have six kids by now. Yeah. What am I doing with my life? Yeah, I'm a saggy titted old broad. <laughs> time for marriage. Time for marriage. <laughs> I remember when I was 23 years old. Oh, <laughs> here's my wedding book. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely had friends that were getting married. I didn't. I mean, I was always like very career focused. I didn't think I was going to settle down that young. But then I met Kane and, you know, you just fucking now, did fell that, in love. That and, experience, uh, did that almost like going through that, did that almost break you guys up? Yeah. I mean, we got I don't think it happens hardly ever, but we were so lucky that we mutually decided to call the engagement off. Yeah. We didn't break up. Nothing changed. We were still living together. We were still together. We just like told friends and family, hey. How long had you two been living together and everything before you got <sighs> engaged for the first time? We moved in together after two months. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We were, like, we're psychos. Okay, The cool. fact that we're still together is crazy because we just did everything wrong. Like, we Well, maybe did... you sometimes just have to get <laughs> some of that stuff out of the way. Yeah, you know, just squash all the early romance. I mean, like, you flush romance down the toilet so fast. When you've only been together for two months and already you're, like, you know, watching that person, like shit and then get in the shower like it's just it takes away so much of that allure of you know like oh he's gonna pick me up for a date i still refuse to do that in front of my wife you know shit in front of her no way see we have we have cats and so like they'll like scratch on the door if i don't keep the door cracked so he's definitely like walked by as i shit but he he is a whole big thing where he has like a full poo phobia like he locks the door when he's and i'm like we don't live in a youth hostel. Like nobody's gonna come in here. I I certainly don't want to go in there. <laughs> you just hear latches and like yes, <laughs> it's a whole <laughs> like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those storefronts. Jewelry stores. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we. I'm I'm starting to talk about it on stage, but this was this was literally like two weeks ago. He he takes 45 minute man shits. I don't know if you do this. I feel like many dudes I know take so long to poop, and it's an actual like biological thing because you don't have the same muscles down there that we do. Mm, we have, yeah, like, for pushing. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> fucking <laughs> wicked smile. Hey, uh, now I'm just, uh, I'm just some kind of scientist <laughs> over here. But uh, I know that girls have certain muscles to push certain things out. I you know I, I read a Britannica encyclopedia once, and uh, you know I majored in some stuff in high school. <laughs> Sir, uh, you can't major in stuff in high school. Hey, you know, I was just really good at it. They call it majoring, you know? <laughs> I want to hear so much more of this guy. Can this guy be like an actual thing? Yeah, not a problem. I mean, you know, like. What's uh, your name? Oh, uh, I would say uh, uh, my name is uh, is, uh, is uh, Lars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My name is Lars. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite part. 
Laws, yeah. <laughs> like, laws, yeah. My name is Laws. It, yeah. Immediately, you're like checking for it, and che- yes, you know, check in, birth certificate, check. <laughs> yep, checks out. Looks good. <laughs> yeah, you oh know. So uh, sometimes uh, you're in the hospital room, and uh, the man, you know, he can't contribute much to the childbirth. So you have the woman who's really doing most of the work. She pushes the sure. baby out. Sometimes it's you know anywhere yeah. from like. 13 to 22 pounds, you know. Whoa, and then, uh, 22 pounds. Yeah, that's the average size of a baby, right? Wow. Yeah. I, you know, that sounds uh, high to me, but... It, I mean, I don't know. It's the size of my uh, my my uh, my nephew. He's a toddler, but, you know, that's... I figure that they don't gain much weight wow. from the time they have a baby to a toddler, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like it's yeah. like a medium dog being pushed out of your... your uh, I mean, I'm not, machine. you know, judging how big the cooter <laughs> is or anything. I mean, I'm just saying, that, you know, life has got to find a way. No disrespect. No disrespect to your big cooter or nothing, okay? But if you got to push out something that's 22 pounds, that's on you. I'll be there. I mean, I'll be there to support. That's all I can say. That's a Lars thing. Like, he, like, insults you when he doesn't need to. And he's like, yeah. ain't no disrespect about your hooch hey, cooter. Hey, I know you got a giant voluminous trap down there, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not oh, saying voluminous. that that's a bad thing, all right? There's a lot of stuff going on down there, and there's a lot of men that I'm sure would be into that. That's not my personal cup of tea or nothing, but you do you. That's okay. Oh, my God. Voluminous? Uh, you know, some that's, women have a voluminous vagina, you that's know? That's the best. By the way, I said huge cuter. Huge cuter. I said huge cuter. <laughs> huge cuter. Oh, my God. I love it. Anyway, so uh, he, he takes a long time. He told me that he intentionally doesn't push because his doctor told him not to like that you can get like hemorrhoids or whatever yeah 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 and so he just he's just in there for so long but the problem is we've always lived in a place that has one bathroom only okay and i have ibs so that means that like when i have to go like it's i have no warning i just like i have to get in there so this was two weeks ago he was in there with the door locked he wouldn't get out i had to go and there was an empty cardboard box in our living room and i pooped in the box heck yeah (laughs) So were your cats looking at you yeah. like one of oh, us? No. Oh, my God. That's so funny you say that. Literally, I've been like talking about it on stage recently. <laughs> and that's literally a line I say where they walked up go. to me. They had a look on their face like hello. I've never seen before. And they're like, oh, you are one of us. Oh, hello, mother. Oh, hello, mother. Hello. How are you? Hi. Yeah. And they I also like you forget that cats cover theirs with litter as a sign of like respect to their owner. Oh. But obviously, like I didn't. And I felt like they, like, feared me afterward. They were like, oh, like, you're just, savage. Just like you do that in the living room, and then all of a sudden, you, <laughs> do you watch Game of Thrones at all? No, uh, I know I this, need to. There's this one great, like, scene where this uh, this queen gets shamed in front of the whole village. Yeah. And there's just these people with bells just going, shame. <laughs> <laughs> shame <laughs> and i just imagine them walking around as you're like oh no no don't I, look I at me to, i'm sorry yeah that's if they had little tiny kitten bells they absolutely would have thrown shame now since me. you are dating another comedian yeah do you guys have to talk about where the line is for you guys to talk about each other on stage i don't think we really like ever talked about it we'll just go up and say shit has there ever been an issue where like one of you been like hey like i don't i don't like you saying that about me that's like a personal thing that we have the only thing that i didn't like was in the very beginning when we started dating uh kane had been previously married and so he hadn't like dumped his married material yet and so he was going on stage still talking like he was married and doing like married material. Oh. But like. like um. <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Hello. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. <clears throat> I gotta lift this big old left arm of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and I mean, it, granted, it was like maybe a month into us being together. But at the time, like all the other Seattle comedians knew we were dating. And, you know, when you're all like at a mic hanging out, everybody's watching. And I, I didn't like, I'm just, you know, being like a narcissistic comedian where I'm like, talk about me. Like, don't yeah. talk about your ex-wife anymore, which now I look back and I'm like, well, he, maybe he like wasn't ready to get rid of that material yet. Like, sure. you know, building material is a fucking process and uh, it's not like as neat and clean sometimes. It's like, well, we're done now. So now I get rid of all that material and I already have a great new 45 minutes about being single or dating a new person. So uh that was one time that i was like i don't like that you're acting like you're still with her and blah blah blah. but that was really the only thing i don't think we've ever said anything that yeah is too far just because we're both so 
open. Right. You know, I'm talking about pooping in a box on a podcast. You know, it's like it's hard to offend me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, let it all hang bro. out. I'm a bro. Just, you know, I'm bro time. With, uh, <laughs> oh, Poops McGillicuddy over here. <laughs> poops McGillicuddy. Oh, shit's in a box turd cut over yeah, here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm dating this new girl, right? <laughs> okay. She started pooping in a box in the living room. I mean, who does that? <laughs> who does that? <laughs> who does that? Uh, uh, let's get into this next segment. Oh, fanning mean, out. Fanning out. Fanning out. Questions from fans. As I was fanning myself, that was As good you timing. Yourself, it's great. I reached out to people online. So okay. if you could ask Kelsey Cook a question, what would it be? Uh, I know that your meter's expiring here in a little bit, so okay. we'll try to speed through some of these. Okay. Um, Joshua Tipton from Facebook actually asks, where would you like to do stand-up that you haven't been to? Somewhere exotic? Oh. Um, that's a good question. Uh, I, I was able to perform in Paris earlier this year, which was a really cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, How were the crowds there? amazing so warm and welcoming um but it was billed as like an um, a night of american comedy in paris oh, like that's good it's going to be in english so it was a whole thing where <laughs> i was up there people in the back they're like i did not like i do not like yeah. and then, then who is this comedian who is this america <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah they were actually really nice but i mean there's so many things like they don't fucking they don't know who like bob saget is or like Al- you know if like oh, you like have like references, references. Are, are yeah so i had to substitute some things out there but they were i mean they were so nice uh it was a really really fun show um i don't know to be honest i feel so burnt out from travel like from being on the road well you went Pretty hardcore on the road with uh, Jim Norton yeah. for a while, right? Yeah, like three years. And I'm kind of in a place now where I'm trying to balance my life out a little bit more and not sure. rely so heavily on road work. Um, the podcast really helps with that. But um, I don't know. Canada. I want to perform in Canada. Yeah? Yeah. I hear such great things about uh, Canadian clubs and like the comedy scene up there. Have you um, Have you been uh, to Canada no. like, in general? Uh, I went to Vancouver for Jay-Z and Justin Timberlake in concert, which was oh, amazing. That was yeah. a very nice combination. Loving that. Yeah. Um, but I haven't performed up there. Okay. So. Uh, yeah. Montreal. Uh, I, I've performed in Montreal and Toronto and uh, they're both great. Oh, yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. I've only heard good S- super things. Super cool people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm about to actually, you listeners in the Detroit, Toronto area, I'll be back there beginning of December to headline. Hey, mark those calendars. Yo, yo. Uh, at ghostface.b.the.one <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> what has been the most embarrassing thing that Jim Norton has done around you, and was it as one of his characters? <laughs> if yes, which one was it? <laughs> That's a good question. I think I've talked about it before on like the Jim and Sam show Mm -hmm. on Sirius. The thing that humiliates me the most is when we are in a store together and he accuses me of shoplifting. Oh, wow. Yeah. This has been like a very frequent thing on the road. Will he go for it and really like, he really really goes for it. Where we'll be like checking out. We'll be at like a CVS or something like that. We'll be checking out and he'll be like, are you not going to pay for the things that are in your purse? And I'm like, I, I, you start getting like almost panic. Yeah. Attack-y. yeah. I mean, like I can roll with most sort of pranky things, but when it involves something that could get me like arrested, like if you're accusing somebody of doing something that could really get them in trouble, I just become such like a Lisa Simpson. Like, listen to me right now. I'm all panicky. Just even thinking about it. Has he ever planted something? No, in your purse? thank God. Thank God. He wouldn't go that far. Cause I would <laughs> legit. I mean, sense. that's like, you're actually trying to put yeah, me yeah, in yeah, jail. Yeah, yeah. Um, but those that's hard because there's no real good way to get out of it because if i'm like if i look at the cashier and i'm like sorry he's just he's just joking it looks like like uh, i'm covering it up so he like that's a really good one that he does where it's like that's a pretty good motherfucker like what are you freaking doing yeah i get i just get red in the face you used to do these uh these like makeup segments yeah that that i enjoyed uh stand-ups doing makeup stand-ups doing makeup where you would do (laughs) like gyms and other comedians yeah like full-blown like 
makeup, like eyeshadow, lipstick, red carpet, like, fake red eyelashes. carpet, and it just yeah. turned into this mess by the end. <laughs> and uh, it was very enjoyable. I enjoyed. Thank those you. Yeah. yeah, it's on YouTube if you guys want to watch it. I did like sixteen episodes. Yeah, they're, Stand up, they're a lot makeup. of fun. It's just like because it's a great conversation. Then all of a sudden, by the end, it's just like, what did they just become? What happened? The men usually look beautiful, and I usually look like a dragon. Like I look so scary. But yeah, Bert Kreischer's kids came on and did our makeup. Oh, and nice. Yeah, it's so many fun people. Uh, final question at B Watson eighty two. As a female comic, what has been a great advantage <laughs> and or disadvantage? If you could work anything other than comedy, what would it be and why? So it's kind of a two parter. Two parter. Um, I think an advantage of being a female comedian is that you you always stand out. Like just statistically, there are fewer female comedians than male yeah. comedians, um, and so I think it's easier to stand out and. Um, it's a great time to be a female comedian. There's such a push for diversity. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that can be an advantage. Obviously a disadvantage is that, um, there's a bunch of shitty stereotypes about female comedians. And, uh, especially if you are, uh, relatively attractive, if you look slightly better than a dumpster fire, then it's like, Oh, nope. Don't want to hear this. No way. Like this. She's got like lips and eyes and stuff. What's going on up there? <laughs> what is this? Yeah. I don't mean to insult you or nothing, but you know. Yeah. No, I mean like I I had to, especially on the road with Jim starting out, I felt like I had to say something about it right when I'd get out there and be like, I know that like when I come out that you guys are like, oh, this looks like a good time to take a dump. Like, you know, like <laughs> I just fast forward through this broad. So I like, I think it helps to address it a little bit i don't really anymore but yeah. for a while i was i was saying you, something did you find yourself having to or just in general do you have finding yourself having to dress down a little bit like so it's like more like the hoodie and jean yeah. kind of wear so people like focus on the jokes and and it's and not, not like guys in back they're like Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh god yeah you know over time i've definitely started to dress much more casually but it's I don't know if it's necessarily based on like a crowd difference or like a reaction from people. It's just because I like I started comedy looking really done up on stage. Mm -hmm. To me, it felt like, oh, well, this is like a show. Like I was like almost starting in a different era. I right. thought it's an evening on the town. Yeah. This, uh, we're going to have a great time tonight. <laughs> yeah. When people would still like wear suits on airplanes, like that's when I thought I was starting stand up, even though it was fucking, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You're not allowed in the club without your ticket stub <laughs> upon entry. <laughs> Yeah. must see it and your handkerchief <laughs> yeah so i put your bowler hats to the, next <laughs> <laughs> to the right of you and and the the ashtrays put out those cigarettes when i go on stage yeah that's like what i like m like marvelous mrs mazel shit where yeah, i yeah, like yeah. <laughs> you have your white gloves on yeah. and stuff. like hello uh, uh, it's lovely to be here yeah. tonight yeah my fucking jewels so uh <laughs> i i was doing that in the beginning and then i realized i had a really hard time um being goofy on stage when I was all done up. Well, also just what you're wearing. If you're not comfortable to be mobile, yeah, it's, then it's literally like you you're taking like an a extra physical half restriction. second kind of thing. Like if I wear certain shirts that don't breathe enough because I'm so active and physical on stage, I feel like I'm like tripping up on myself a little bit oh, as I'm moving yeah. around. You know? Yeah, I used to wear like heeled boots and stuff, and it's. Yeah, that was a bad phase for me, too. Right? <laughs> I healed boots. It was, you know, I'm trying to do act outs and stuff, and I'm like... I'm trying like, to do the worm. Roll, roll my ankle, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I uh, I got to a place where I was like, I don't know, maybe it was an insecurity. Like, I wanted to go up feeling confident, uh, just physically. Like, I would go up thinking, okay, if I have, like, full hair and makeup done, I will feel confident walking yeah. out in front if of I these people. I feel like a star, I yeah. would be a star tonight. <laughs> yeah, I would just go out like just full like Jean Benet Ramsey, like just too much. Like it was Hiya. <laughs> <laughs> too much for a who, comedy who show. Who likes jokes out here? <laughs> Do you like jokes? Person okay. a tiny. <laughs> Here's the first joke of the evening. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was too much. So your mom is in the back with like yeah. a, a a ten on a clipboard, being yeah. like, "You go, baby." A little pom poms. That's my baby. That's my baby right there. Yeah. She's a foosball queen too in training. <laughs> you tell those dick jokes, baby. You I love it. you. I love you so much. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Um. So yeah, now I'm definitely much more casual, just because it 
it like pairs up with what I feel like my comedy is and the jokes I'm sure. saying. I want to be able to be goofy and comfortable and not feel like so uh, restricted, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then what was the other part of that? The other part. Oh, if was I could do something else. If you could do something else, which is a hard question, but. Hmm. I would love to. I would love to work with animals. Uh, oh my god, you're getting that saxophone ready. That's so funny. Oh yeah, I'm getting ready. I would love to work with animals. I love animals so much. They bring me so much joy. Favorite animal? Ooh, red panda. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh, those are good. They're so fucking They're cute. Red don't don't red blow pandas. like raccoon puppy <laughs> kittens. Who's a puppy? I just got to eat. That'd be cool if you had, if you had one. If you just had Dude, one in your place. That's like a dream. That's a dream. Oh, would, do you want to hear? I just thought of another impression. This is my impression of like a tiny French mouse, like ordering food. I love it. Je voudrais un sandwich avec du jambon et avec du fromage. Et je suis un petit déjeuner, s'il vous plaît. Oh, I'm sorry. We're actually out of that right now. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Just turns you know <laughs> vulgar right away. Okay, sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, uh, mouse. Désolé, désolé, désolé. Anyway, that's awesome. Thank you. I have like three things, and then just come to me randomly. No, I, I I dig all three of them. Thank you. <laughs> this is the final segment of the show. Welcome to Sax Talk. Oh. Oh. Sax Talk. Talk. So I briefed. Kelsey, right before the show, said, uh, I'm going to play some sweet, sweet saxophone while she tells a story of a sexual encounter. Whenever you're ready, I will follow you with this sax. Okay. (sighs) Ready? So, um, when I was in college, I briefly started dating a guy um, who was a full foot taller than me. And he... uh, Big dude, very sweaty. <laughs> and um, I'll never forget, like, the first time that we tried having sex, he was on top of me. But just, like, the like the physics of it, his chest was right above my face because he was so much taller and... Um, he started to sweat and the sweat started to drip from his chest into my eyes. And then we stopped seeing each other. (laughs) Hold up. That's a story called salty love. Oh, salty love. That's all it took. A little bit of sweat in the mouth and you're like, can't do this. I'm out of here. Can't. Wow. Yeah. So. Was the relationship good outside of that? It was fine. I mean, it was one of those things where You're like it was, you know, not good enough to hold on to outside. Yeah. Of that. It was. It was casual. It was that like out like? How tall was this dude? Like six four, and okay. I'm five four. Oh well, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it was the right thing to do to go our. I mean, was ways. he? Was he a hairy dude? Yeah. So it's yeah. just like just the mounds of like chest hair and just like sweat and you're like were you <laughs> were you underneath you're like oh no uh, it was like oh, a no, slow-mo no, 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 no. i was yeah, like, like no <laughs> oh. yeah yeah that's how it was <laughs> so we didn't really see each other anymore after that oh no <laughs> wait <laughs> don't sweat on me <laughs> How is that for you, baby? <laughs> Not good. Give me a hand towel immediately. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should clean up. I got you real dirty. <laughs> I'm disgusted right now. Go give me the Listerine as well. <laughs> yeah, because I got that mouth so dirty, right? <laughs> No, it's infected with your sweat, you idiot. You're not being sexy at all. Oh, yeah. Stop with the sexy voice. You're killing me right now. You know what? It's over, over, over. (laughs) Wow. 
You're masterful with this. This is a whole other level. It's a it's another dimension sometimes on Jeremiah Wonders. I love it. <laughs> I've never done anything like this. It's so fun. A fun, weird, bizarre podcast. Yeah. Uh, thanks for doing the show. Of course, this is so much fun. It's fun to just hang out with you and have a laugh. Just know, have right? a giggle. Just have a giggle. <laughs> just pull up, put on those headphones, and have a giggle <laughs> with Kelson Jair. Kelson Jair Bear. Kelson Jair Bear. You know, just having some fun. Uh, your album's out. Yes. Make sure to check that out. That's available on all platforms. Yes. Thank you. It's and, called Savor uh, It. Savor It. Check out Kelsey Cook, Savor It, and then uh, your podcast. Yeah, Self Helpless Podcast. It's also on iTunes. It's part of the All Thanks Comedy Network. It's great. We would love for you to come join the fam. Heck yeah. And then uh, what uh, What are your social handles? Um, Instagram is at Kelsey Cook Comedy. It's K-E-L-S-E-Y. Uh, Twitter's Kelsey Cook. And my website is KelseyCook.com for tour dates and such. Yes. I highly encourage you guys to go see Kelsey live. And uh, yeah, I, I wish you... And Kane, continued success, and uh, super happy that we got to, to kick it, and uh, love being pals with you. Love being pals with you too, man. Yeah.